So today we have with us uh, Dr. Madhura, who is a consultant uh, ophthalmologist. Uh, she's also specialized in uh, uh, FECU and medical retina, currently uh, working at Vasan Eye Care, Bangalore. Dr. Madhura, welcome to National Dental Medical Student Summit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Madhura, uh, so this, uh, just to give an insight with the summit, uh, it's uh, uh, summit wherein we uh, discuss with the different consultants. Uh, so in this case, uh, no ophthalmologist yourself uh, to understand you know, how an ophthalmologist life would be and what uh, a student after MBBS can look into if, to be an ophthalmologist, right? So with that, let's go ahead and uh, so understand from your perspective, what all, you know, how the speciality is, right? So the first question is, you know, why did you choose ophthalmology as a speciality uh, after MBBS? What made you choose that particular speciality? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, beginning from uh, internship, at the end of internship, I had decided I wanted to take up a clinical branch. And uh, I was pretty sure I wanted a branch which had uh, exposure to both OPD as well as OT. And then having said that, I was not much inclined towards emergencies. So basically, I didn't want to attend much of emergencies. So by that, I could rule out all the emergency related branches. So at the end, there was a small bit of more inclination towards ophthalmology because as a child, I had visited more of ophthalmologists than any other specialties. So all these made me to choose the ophthalmology as my career pathway. Got it, great. So now uh, we know you've been uh, practicing ophthalmology now. So uh, what, has, what, do, what do you see as a, a pro, the advantages of being an ophthalmologist after practicing now and in the corporate sector? Uh, yes, sir. first thing, uh, as I said, it's a branch which has combination of both medical and surgical field. And the second and the most important thing, what I feel is the job satisfaction. Whatever you're doing at the end of the day, you should be happy. So when I see my patients, when they come back to me and see, they say that they are able to see better than before. If I am able to even improve or stabilize their vision, that's most rewarding. So I could say uh, ophthalmology is one of the rewarding branches. So that job satisfaction is very, very much. And the third thing I would say, uh, most of our surgeries are done under topical or local anesthesia. So dependency on anesthetist is not that much when compared to other uh, surgical branches. And last, I would say, uh, time for ourselves. Uh, basically, we uh, we can choose our timings. So I would say you have ample time for yourself. That is one of the greatest advantage, I would say. Got it. Right. So oh, along with now, you mentioned the you know, multiple advantages of being an ophthalmologist. Uh, likewise, uh, what, what, what do you see as a disadvantage of being an ophthalmologist? Uh, yeah, coming to disadvantage, I would say uh, we all know that any surgical matter, uh, surgical branch, uh, that is, it would require a longer learning curve. For that matter, ophthalmology, I would say, requires a little more longer learning curve because uh, we do surgeries under microscope. So to develop that hand-eye coordination, to know your equipment, uh, in ophthalmology, you name a procedure, you have an e equipment. So you need to know that equipment well before you get into the procedure. So it requires time and dedication to develop those skills. Second is uh, hands-on. In surgical branch, we keep saying about hands-on. So you can't compare hands-on in ophthalmology to other surgical branches, like maybe it's a general surgery or OBG, because your mentor has to assess you. He should be he or she should be confident to give you cases. So once you develop your skills, you will that which will require more time. That that's what I would say. One more thing is, if anyone is planning to put their own private setup, definitely there is a high initial cost uh, investment. Yeah. Right. So uh, now all we looked into both uh, advantages and disadvantages of being a pathologist. So with that, uh, for whom uh, do you suggest uh, this particular specialty as a okay? Uh, yes, sir. so basically, as I mentioned, the one who wants to be in OPD as well as in OT, they don't want to spend their entire uh, day schedule in OPD. Uh, maybe some are not interested to be in OT only. So this is a branch which gives exposure to both OPD as well as OT. 
your second is if you don't want to attend much of emergencies you're not on your toes you don't want to attend night calls so this is one of the beautiful brands so um, and third is if you're more fascinated doing surgeries under microscope you're more you want to develop those skills so this is a great brand for that got so now once uh, you become an ophthalmologist um, now what are the super specialization opportunities available so you yourself uh, no have entered into uh, phaco and medical retina so likewise what are the different ways uh, a ophthalmologist can upgrade their skills to the next as a super specialist yes sir. so uh, specialties in ophthal we have cornea we have div- that's been divided into these various sub specialties that is fellowship in cornea pediatric ophthalmology orbital oculoplasty glaucoma retina phaco refractive surgery so these are mm-hmm. the various sub specialties which are there in the branch of ophthalmology so uh, that's what there's ample amount of inst- there are very good institutes in india which offer these and even in abroad got it so these are the uh, specialties which you know uh, uh, ophthalmologists can pursue for uh, uh, his or her for the journey into, right so now coming to the uh, job opportunities Uh, soon after the uh, md ophthalmology how is the job opportunities in india and also in india uh, yes sir post uh, M- uh, your ms or dnb ophthalmology with a good uh, good uh, fellowship you have ample opportunity in india as well as in abroad again it's you who would decide would you want to work in a medical college if you are interested in academics as well second would you want to like to work in a corporate hospital or would you like to join a government hospital so these are the various options you have in uh, india and for abroad there are certain examinations you would have to go through for example you want to be a consultant at uk you have to uh, pass your frc of the examination or you would like to take a long term like maybe one or two years of fellowship in abroad you have to go through fico and ico fellowship exams also frcs gloss exam so these are the various exams you have to go through got it, right so uh, with all the things uh, the one of the main thing uh, we would like to know is what is the earning potential i know so not as an nd ophthalmology uh, uh, what would be the pay scale uh, ranging from and to what extent you can you know uh, uh, expect an earning per month so earning potential after you finish your ms dn or ms or dnb with a fellowship definitely the earning potential is really good again i would say the earning depend uh, earning depends on oneself how well equipped are you in terms of clinical skills knowledge surgical skills and your communication skills to uh, explain to your patient convince them or to explain what is happening with them so when you earn all these little aspects you will definitely earn well got it so we'll give some numbers if you can give some numbers so definitely from... a post fellowship you start from 1.2 to 1.5 will be your package that's for sure post okay. fellowship okay okay right so now uh, looking from uh, the work life balance so how do you see uh, ophthalmology Uh, uh as a career in managing the work and life uh yeah so uh, coming to work life balance uh, are you able to hear me yeah yeah so coming to work life balance i would say because as i mentioned this uh, often has very few emergency i would mention you're not you're not having night calls uh basically i would put it as your boss you you are your own boss in terms of times you would like to work 9 to 5 <laughs> would you like to have evening clinic or so these are the various options you have so you can choose your timings you have ample time for yourself so these are the i would say there's a great work life balance in ophthalmology got that so now uh, looking to uh, next 5 to 10 years uh, as as a journey in ophthalmology uh, the growth of ophthalmology as a specialty how do you see the growth of ophthalmology as a specialty in the next 5 years 5 10 yes sir. so as i mentioned ophthal is a creative branch and technically very very demanding branch uh, in fact i would say it's evolving every day uh, what our senior consultant say is what they didn't do in their residency they are doing right now so they say maybe you all you would do something else what uh, in other 5 to 10 years there are so many new if you see the evolution of each and every surgery it's all uh, machines 
equipments. So there is a lot of scope of research and development in ophthalmology. I see a bright future for ophthalmology as career. Oh, wonderful. So uh, Dr. Mandura, uh, we have just you know, looked into all the uh, academic aspects and the formally, formally discussed regarding the ophthalmology uh, you no, know, as a, as a career pathway and your experience in that particular specialty, right? So now let's move into more uh, informal discussion wherein uh, we'd like to know uh, your journey uh, from the days of MBBS, how it has been, and uh, what ha has there any key uh, areas which influenced your decision making during your MBBS days, and then uh, where did it be your post graduation, and how was your post graduation days? And so could you just give us some insight into? Uh, uh, your journey and your experience in this particular field of um, healthcare. Go ahead. Yes, sir. so it's been a wonderful journey, very exciting and wonderful journey, right from my undergraduation, which I did my MBBS from AJ Institute of Medical Science, Mangalore. So uh, then I, at this point, I have to say I'm grateful to each and every mentor of mine who, whatever I am today, it's because of them. So for post-graduation, I did my post-graduation MS Ophthalmology from Regional Institute of Ophthalmology, Guwahati. So there, my initial foundation was laid down. And then I uh, worked as IOL fellow in Shankarai Hospital, Coimbatore, where I earned, I mean, I got to know, regard, I mean, I learned the surgical skills. Then I uh, did my medical retina fellowship from Retina Institute of Karnataka, Chamrajpet, Bangalore. So there uh, they, guided me to every aspect of medical retina. In fact, they are guiding me in my day-to-day -day practice even today. So it's it's been a wonderful journey in ophthalmology as a career. Right. So now uh, uh, with all these uh, years of experience of you uh, working in different special hospitals uh, and super speciality learning, right? Uh, what has been the, you know, uh, one of the, uh, uh, challenging which you have faced? Uh, challenges, I would say, see, uh, learning every every day or learning a new skill, new uh, surgical step, I would say. So I, I take that as a learning process itself. But challenge for me, per se, if you ask, I would say that motivating yourself every day. See, what happens at one point, uh, you, you feel like, uh, okay, I'm not getting this particular step I did so many times, but still I'm not able to do it. Somewhere you start giving up, I feel. So that positive self talk to yourself that no one would help. I mean, no one can help you and you have to motivate yourself every day. So that is a little bit of a challenging uh, situation. That's what I believe. So you have to motivate yourself every day that go on, you can do it. Yes. Wow, wonderful. And uh, what has been the best part of being in this particular speciality? Uh, yes, as I mentioned, uh, like uh, if, uh, for example, if I'm in my OPD, maybe my patient would have been accompanied by uh, two, three attenders because their vision is hand movement or finger counting. You do a procedure, you do maybe a cataract surgery and they, in your subsequent follow-up, they come all alone to your uh, chamber and say they're able to see better. So that makes my day. I could, I can say that. The smile on the face, what uh, I see in my patients, that's yeah. rewarding. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. So now uh, almost we are at the uh, end of the discussion. So what would be your suggestion or word of guidance for the young uh, NDBS graduates who are inclined to take off the as a specialty? Uh, yes. See, uh, it's a very, very uh, encouraging, satisfying and rewarding branch as I always, I, I already mentioned all the points in favor and also the disadvantage and all that. But having said that, that's the message I want to give for all the doctors, whatever branch it is. I believe in one line that is you get what you love or you have to love what you get. So stop complaining about your branch. Do not compare your branch. Third is you have to compete with yourself every day in whatever branch you are. So be thankful to whatever branch you get. Wow, wonderful. So uh, Dr. Madhura, I, I could see that you have come a long way uh, from the days of years and traveling to uh, know, uh, some to complete your uh, no, uh, uh, post-graduation and then you know, getting into super speciality and now practicing in the corporate sector. 
uh, it's really it's very inspiring the journey which you have taken uh, to be an ophthalmologist and you know uh, uh, as you rightly said uh, you know putting yourself first and you competing with your own uh, skills so i see a lot of you know a great future which you can come across and uh, contributing to a lot of many more patients and the visions uh, for the people in india and abroad uh, so thank you so much dr madhra for being here today and you know, uh, sharing your views and experiences to the students hope they get a great insight from your discussion and they could make a informed decision on their career path thank you so much sir. thank you it was it's a great uh... Uh, platform thank you for giving me this opportunity but i would uh, like to mention to uh, uh, all the young doctors that please do watch this summit because it's very 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 helpful so it will really help you to make your great decisions in life thank you thank you doctor isn't this valuable to know the career pathway of a specialist here from experiences of 50 plus consultant doctors from across india get an insight into 22 plus medical specialties and make an informed career decision which will shape your future join india's first of a kind online medical specialty summit exclusively designed for medical students visit our website drsajjanacademy.com to know more don't miss out on this golden opportunity